Well, 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 welcome to episode 7 of the Racing Group Podcast. Today I'm joined by Paul Rigda, the third. What's up? Nothing much, and we got a somewhat meaty episode here, segments. Uh, we got 2020 review, uh, expect expectations for this year. Then we go head on to the NASCAR side. Uh, what's been going on over there? Uh, yesterday was the clash. We'll talk about that later. Oh yeah, because I really want to talk about how Kyle Busch won. Ah! Uh, don't get me started on that. All right. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's gonna be a good one. Uh, then we head okay. on to the anyway. mailbox and uh, final thoughts to end off the episode. Twenty twenty review. How was that year for you? Uh. Good old COVID year. Um, I mean, with everything considering, um, wasn't too bad. Um, sucks that uh, Auto City and uh, Bertrand wasn't able to open, but hey, at least we got to go out to Owasso, and which uh, kudos to you on their on your pretty dang good uh, filming. So that Thank was you. Cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, a pretty good year. Um. Ended up uh, third in points out there in truck series. Um, so that was, you know, missed a couple nights of racing, but still ended up third. So had to do some uh, adjusting on my truck and came back and got second um, in championship night. And then I ended up winning nationals and then second in the outlaw series. So that was a pretty good night that night. Yeah. Uh, didn't you win a feature as well? Yep, yep, won a feature. I don't remember the day off chance, but yeah, Same. you got it on video somewhere. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I got I won a feature. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, got uh, second championship night and then uh, won nationals. And then uh, second the outlaw. So a lot, of, a, lot of good, a lot of good trucks out there this year, really. Um, a lot of people are stepping their game up and everybody's uh, becoming more competitive, which is, which is real, real cool. You know, obviously, uh, being in the race, you know, you want to have, um, you, you know, it's all you want to win, but you don't want to just run away from the people. You know, you want everybody to be have a chance of winning. You know, what I'm saying having yeah. having a good chance. So having good competition is, is always important, and uh, you know, um, having good friends out there too. You know, so rely on you know if you that ain't racing or maybe their trucks down that week. You know that you can count on for you know changing a tire if you got a tire go down or. You know, helping you load and unload, so that's you know that's pretty cool too. Yeah, I see a lot of that happening. It's uh, like you said, it's a really cool sight to see. Uh, others helping others out with stuff. I like yeah. seeing that. Um, so, uh, the truck field in twenty twenty, pretty normal. Uh, guy Anthony Richardson, Josh DeLong, you running up front, pretty normal. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like I said, yeah, there's a lot of, um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, I, I can't really say us fast guys because, you know, we're all, we're all really fast. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the usual couple guys that, you know, are doing, that usually win on everything, you know, it, it, everybody stepped the game up this year. Um, so, so the same guy ain't winning everything, you know, it's a good question. I know this year alone, I know uh, Josh won. Anthony won, Greg won, I won, Zach won, Darren won, yep. you know, so there was a, I don't know, I can't remember if off chance if anybody else won, but there was, you know, it's like five or six different trucks won, you know, so it's, it's not like a, uh, one guy running away with it this year, so everybody, including myself, had to step up, step their game up and, you know, become more competitive, you know, so, which, oh. which is really cool that, uh, that it's come to that. Because everybody has to evolve with time, you know. One guy can't just be fast, so everybody's got to get faster to be competitive, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, with you listing the names of the drivers that won, uh, Zach Lopez, he won on his birthday. I don't know why I had that written down right <laughs> on my tape. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Zach Lopez won on his birthday. I want to give him oh, yeah, a shout out as well. Year, uh, the night that Zach, <laughs> the beginning of the year when Zach got DQ'd, 
um, for the airbox issue. Um, Charlie Boone took over and won that night. But uh, but yeah, Zach went on his birthday. Actually, he was. I don't know no, he was actually, he beat um, Greggy. Greggy was what? running up front that race. Greg Gregory Long. Oh yeah, Long. no, I meant um, uh, at the beginning of the year. Oh when, yep, uh, that one. Know, it was like the yeah, first the second, or second um second, night. Se- second or third race in, yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Charlie Boone won that one as well. A lot of competition out there this year. I like to see that. Yeah. Um. And and. Speaking of Zach, actually, um, special guest, Zach's here right now, too. <laughs> Zach is... Hello, Zach. What's up? <laughs> I didn't expect you to be here. So what was it like winning on your birthday? It was pretty cool. It was definitely one of the best moments I've had racing so far. That's it? <laughs> I mean, I was really excited. I mean, I, just, I bet you were. That night, I, to be honest, uh, I was kind of cheering for Gregory at the end, but yeah, it's pretty cool oh, to see you win on, on your man. birthday That's as well. Really cool. Hey, either way, it would have been fine for me. Right. Yeah. But no, Greggy. Um, Greggy, he, he's doing a hell of a job this year, actually. Yeah, um, I'd say he improved yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, Greggy's doing one hell of a job. Actually, I like to get him on the podcast uh, in like the next episode or two. I might have to ask him. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that was a great race to watch. Yeah, I mean it was a. It was a I would I would like to say it was a great race to be in, but I think it kind of sucked getting beat up by damn Zach and Greggy. Josh did <laughs> everything we could do. We couldn't keep up them little squirrely bastards. <laughs> uh. Josh, was Josh in that race, DeLong? Yep, yep, Josh finished oh. third, and I ended up fourth, actually. Imagine why he would have felt like. Oh, man. <laughs> we were, I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what Zach and Greggy did to their truck, but they were both rolling compared to me and Josh. I mean, we were, we were, we were hauling, but I don't know what they did, but they, mm. they, they got open. We just couldn't reel them back in. Actually, Gregory's truck improved. Actually, it was it performed the best it has all year at the very end of the season. Because I know yep. that uh, Greg Long was butthurt about uh, Gregory out running him. Oh yeah, well actually, when Greg got rid of his truck, he uh, he drove Greggy's truck in the nationals, and he, I don't know, I don't remember what he ended up finishing in nationals, fifth or sixth or something. But yeah, um, there was there was quite a few. I think there was like. 19 trucks at Nationals, something like that? I don't know. There was a lot, and uh, all I remember is the Josh Shaw rolling down the back again. Yeah, oh, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> all the only thing I remember about Nationals is kicking everybody's ass. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you just mentioned that. You did re- win that race. Sucks um, yeah, was, having to remember a lot of races because they all blend in together in my mind. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Well, you know, especially with video and stuff. You know, oh, you gotta, yeah, definitely. As a driver, you don't tend to forget stuff that happens in each race from what I've heard. But, yeah, as, like, a fan perspective of it or recording races, it's mm-hmm. it just kind of blends in together. Right. No, I, yeah, I, I can... Maybe not a couple years back, but I know last year I can I can tell you just about what happened on each night, you know. Yeah, I can't do that. Hmm. Anyway, uh, twenty twenty. Uh, that was the year for the books for a while. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, what about twenty twenty one? What are your plans? Uh. <laughs> My plan for 2021, um, I would like to say that I'm going to slow down on racing, but we all know that'd be a lie, and I'm not much of a liar, so I'm going to try to hit it hard and heavy and um, see what I can do this year. I know uh, in the 19-year, 19 19 season, I got 
uh, I finished second place in trucks at Bertrand and Auto City. And yep. the 2020 season, I finished third in trucks. So, if my understanding is correct, I think 2021, I must have to finish first this year in trucks. Or finish fourth. I, no, come on, you're going the <laughs> wrong way. What are you doing? Don't do me like that. It went down, oh. it started at two, went down to three. <laughs> well, I got I got a second twice. The if I had to I follow the pattern. Time. The pattern is broke. I break the mold, man. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going for that number one spot. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, but, have uh, fun with that, then. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, But yeah, best of luck uh, to you this year. Um, It's going to be a really different yep. year. Um. I've been so uh, used to going to a WASO for the entire season with COVID and everything. With everything uh, opening back up, it's like there's more options. Where do you That's plan on sucks. going, do you know? I've been thinking about part-time between Auto City. Actually, no. Birch run full-time because they usually race on Fridays, uh, but they're yep. going to have some Saturday races. And part time between Auto City and Owasso. Are you? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, all all jokes aside, the 2021 season, um, there's gonna be there's gonna as to what I've been hearing, you know, I talk to a lot of guys, you know, racing guys, you know, yep. and you know, you you start out with racers, they're gonna stay competitors, and then it ends up being, you know, real close buddies, you know, and then you, you know formed a really close relationship with a couple of guys, you know, a uh, really small group of buddies, you know, and, but, uh, with everything being said, I think it's going to be one hell of a year this year for racing in, in the couple of tracks around the tri, you know, tri area, you know, Bertrand, Auto City, and Owasco. Yeah. There's going to be a lot, a lot of good, good racers, whether it's, you know, trucks or whether it's pure stocks or, you know, even Max D for that matter, there's going to be a yep. lot of, um, good racers, you know, a lot of good competition. So I, I'm I'm excited for this year. I think the 2021 season for uh, for trucks in a couple different places where we race around here is going to be a fun year. Uh, for sure. I'm I'm actually um well excited for that as well. Uh, but we got more uh, news breaking out between uh, Auto City and Birch Run. A lot super late models are coming back to those tracks. To those tracks. I heard that. Yep. I heard that. that uh, with that the new Outlaw be... Super Late Model Series. That'll be exciting. Cannot wait to watch. I think uh, Birch Run will be hosting the season finale? Mm, that I don't know. Uh, you would have more knowledge on that. I saw the schedule earlier, earlier today, and it looks like that the new series is going to be running six races. They're going to be running at Birch Run twice. And running at Auto City once. Yeah. Um, okay. The last race will be held at Birch Run Speedway. So I'm going to that one. That's on um, okay. September 11th weekend. I will be going to that okay. then. Okay. <sighs> Cannot wait. Oh yeah. Also Modifieds are starting up back up full time at Auto City. Okay. Yeah. I know uh, a couple years ago. They did a couple part timers. They had them come in, you know, from the from the tri area. They had them come in, and then by that, I think they raced maybe three or four times that year, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. Um, I think everybody has gotten there. Everybody's kind of sick and tired of the sitting around, you know, got race cars ready. You can't go nowhere. It's just certain places have certain restrictions, you know. But uh, yeah, there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be a lot. Of racers coming out of everywhere to come race and get that get that right foot to that pedal. Yep. Especially after 2020, the way that was. Mm -hmm. Now with there are a lot more uh, tracks opening up. The uh, yeah, cannot wait for that. Yeah. Um. So we did 2020 review, 21 expectations. Uh. Oh boy, NASCAR! Woo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Clash. NASCAR. Uh the Clash. Uh it was boring until the end. I don't like the yeah, Daytona Road it was, Course. It was 
for the most part uneventful. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I know everybody kept the uh, kept driving through turn one coming when they had to turn onto the road course part of it. Yeah, everybody just decided they want to go to the oval track instead of turning left. They just, <laughs> instead of making a sharp left, they were just going to follow the race straight to the big oval. <laughs> Ryan so, Blaney, uh, Kurt Busch. I mean, Kurt Busch totally went the wrong way. He went straight and then turned right. Well, you can't, you don't turn right in NASCAR. What are you doing? Well, he had to, or else he was going to plow into the uh, tire barrier. Yeah, yeah, the embankments, right? And then uh, I think Kevin Holt, Kevin Harvick, I don't know, he must have left oh. his, uh, he must have left his driving skills at home that night because I think he spun himself out three times. Oh, uh, the first but, time. I don't remember. I know off coming off of turn one, I know what happened. He got checked up, and then he, I think he got door banged on the left side, sent him sideways. Yep. Well, yeah, and then uh, I know when he was coming down, uh, beginning of the race, when he was coming into the bus stop area, um, there was so much dirt on that track, everybody yeah. cut the corner bad. The bus stop at the... There. The and bus then, stop uh, on the back stretch was terrible. Oh, yeah, well, that's... Uh, and, you know, I'm not big on Toyotas, and, uh, you know, obviously that's a known thing. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not I'm not one to like Joe Gibbs' team, but uh, whether you like him or not, Martin Truex, he had the car to beat. He came through that field, I don't know how many, two or three different times. He was rolling until, uh, like we're talking about that bus stop, that bus stop just, their dirt on that track came out, come out of the backside of that bus stop, and he just aimed for that wall. and obliterated it. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, boy. And then once the but, caution you know, came out, I saw Elliot. I was like, oh, Elliot's going to win because it's Elliot on a road course. Elliot on a road course. And then uh, Ryan Blaney came out of nowhere. He came, you know, I think he started pole. He was, he had, he chased, 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 that's pretty funny. <laughs> chased him back down through the field and uh, got around him. What was it, last Last corner coming out of the final chicane, coming out of the front stretch. Yeah. Um, looks like Chase did the same thing that Jimmy Johnson did to Martin Truex a couple of years back, coming out of the Charlotte Roval and just came in a little too hot and used him for a used him for an assistance and they just went away. And uh, Ryan Blaney smoked the wall and the person that I would say I love to hate, but I just I don't like him at all. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Bush ended up working underneath and got the win. But, yeah. uh, Elliot, know, lost. Win sure. Elliot lost his momentum. If he would have kept his momentum, I, yeah. at least well, I don't know how he would have. Uh, he would have yeah, won. He, after he was pushing Ryan up into the wall, he actually slowed down. You can see himself slow down and then try to speed back up. But at that point, you know, obviously him and, you know, uh, Chase and Ryan are good buddies. But if he would have drove through Ryan, you know, after he's already started spinning and sped sped back up, I think he would have won. But after Kyle got ahead of him, I don't think he just couldn't. He had no speed built up to keep back up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I was uh, disappointed after that. I wanted Blaney to win, uh, but I didn't expect that to happen. And duh, 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 here yeah. comes Kyle Busch. And I was like, oh, well, do me then. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know. There's there's some paint schemes this year that I I like. I want to look at. I I don't. Have you seen the uh, um Eric Jones's uh, armor all car yet? Oh yeah, the forty three. Oh yeah, I oh, saw that man, in qualifying. That, actually, that was pretty good underneath the lights. That is a beautiful car. Yep, I like the orange. I like orange. My orange is actually my favorite color. One of my favorite cars like of the uh, paint schemes of the year. I do like that color. Um, another guy who has a pretty cool uh, color is I actually like, you know, Jimmy Johnson, he was my favorite car, my favorite driver for I don't know how many years. Uh, I know he kind of fell, fell back a little bit, but uh, um, I like how they revamped the Ally scheme oh, yep. and, uh, and have like a purple base. I like them. The turquoise is on there. The colors on there. Ooh, that looks. That is really sharp. Uh, actually, talking about that car, uh, that car won the pole for the Daytona 500. 
Did it really? I, I did not know that yet. I haven't I haven't looked at that. Wow. They just qualified. It was just qualified? Yep. Why? Uh they just qualified like an hour ago. Oh, qualified. I thought you said disqualified. No. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, they just qualified. I uh, William Byron. Yeah, he got second. Really, Hendrick boys are up front. Yep. Again. There you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Daytona duels are tomorrow. Yep. Them should be exciting to watch. I think. Oh yeah. Um, two drivers who are not running uh chartered teams. They made it in on qualifying. I forgot who those drivers are. And I um, think I'm gonna see uh the guy uh, who's driving Gaunt Brothers. That's Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon. He has to race his way in. Okay. What about uh Daniel Suarez with track house? Oh uh, I think he has to race his way in as well. Um who else doesn't have a charter? Um David Reagan. I think you made it in. David Reagan, yeah, who's Oh, uh, Ryan Priest, oh. or Ryan Priest, uh, he Ryan made Priest, it in. Yeah, for JTG, yeah. Jordy, uh, Doherty. Yep. Yep. The, okay. No, talking about that team. Oh, wait, no, um, Ricky Stenhouse, does he race for Doherty Racing? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he races the, the 47 car, right? Yeah. He yeah, actually qualified uh, well. Actually, yeah, it doesn't surprise me because he got yeah, the pole that's, last that's, year. Yeah, um, I think Chris Buescher took over his ride last year, didn't he? Yeah, the 17. Yeah, yeah, 17, yep. But yeah, uh, Ryan Priest and David Reagan, from what I have seen, made the uh, Daytona 500 as of now. There you go. So, four drivers tomorrow have to race their way in, in the duels. Okay, well, because you said uh, Alex Bowman got first, and then William Byron got second, so Alex Bowman will be in duel number one, and Bowman will, er, I'm sorry, Bowman will be in one, and Byron will be in two then, right? Yes. Um, yeah, odd, it goes off your uh, odd, inside line is the first duel, and se- outside line is the second duel. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, with that... Duels are tomorrow. Truck race on Friday. That one's going to be exciting to watch. Um, I actually don't really follow the truck races too much. I know it's weird that I'm a truck racer and I don't follow the trucks. I know a couple guys. I did see that uh, that Thor Sport went back to Toyota, which was kind of shocking. Yeah. What's also shocking is that Ben Rhodes and... Um, oh, yeah, I've seen it? that. Uh, Christian Eckes. Yeah, they're teammates now. That's yeah, uh, yeah, ironic. Oh. Which, that's why I've I seen that, and uh, I kind of chuckled about it. Um, uh, a YouTube channel that I actually watch is Out of the Groove with Eric Easton. Oh, yeah. I don't yep. know if you ever follow him. Yep. Yep. So that's, uh, you know, I, I watch him quite a bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was watching him the other day, and he was saying that, and I, I kind of chuckled. I'm like, that is funny. <laughs> Here they are, end of last year, taking each other out, and now this year they're teammates. Yep. I also memed that wreck as well, uh, playing the uh, circus music in the background. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I honestly don't know why he chose to do that. Uh, certain things get done on the racetrack, you know, done out of whether it's Excitement, anger, frustration, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Certain things are done on the racetrack at a certain time or even um, said in the pit at a certain time, you know, and looking back, they shouldn't have been done. It's one of those yeah. things that it, it, it is what it is now. Um, I just don't I believe think- hooking others in the right rear and then hit, making them hit the wall like that is it's not right for me. <laughs> No, well, no, not at all. But like I'm saying, he, he thought that what well, he was, I'm assuming, I don't know, because I, I haven't talked to him, but, uh, uh, you know, 
he that may have been his way of showing how much he disapproves of what got happened. But there you go. You just drove a truck head on in the wall, and you know what now? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I just can't get behind that at all, right, rearing someone like that, at that no, kind of I, speed as well. It's like no, that... No, I, I, I agree. I don't I don't think that was right not at all. It's like that, that Kyle Busch and Hornet... Was, was that at Texas? Yeah, that was at Texas. Yeah. Like that Kyle Busch and, um, Hor- was it Hornaday that he wrecked? In turns three and four at Texas uh, in 2011. I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's Ron just. Hornaday? Yeah, I just can't get yeah. behind that at, at all. No, and that's. I mean, that's another reason why I'm not big on Kyle Busch. You know, I I don't wish nothing bad for him, but that's just another reason why I'm not big on him. Is if you know he always talks down to the younger class of guys that are racing. You know. It's, um, I know he, he called out, uh, um, I can't remember it right now, right offhand. Lap drivers, uh, I know he did that a lot last year. What's that? Uh, lap cars. Yeah, yeah, lap Small cars. Small name uh, drivers like, like Joey Gase and, and Garrett uh, Smithley. Garrett Smithley, yeah, calls them out and, you know, says they have no place being there, but it's like, you gotta think about it. Everybody's gotta start somewhere. That's their, you know, they're, they're starting out. They're doing the best they can with what they have. And just because they're not as fast as you, not as good as you, and don't got as much money as you, you know, you got to think down about them. It's like, I'm, I'm sure they wish they would have your equipment. You know, just they're doing the best they can. And it, it just, I just don't agree with some of the stuff he says and does, you know. And yeah, if you don't like it, he'll try to, you know, he'll, he, you know, there's several times that he'll take somebody out just because he doesn't like what they did or they were faster than him. It's like, no, you can't be doing that. Yeah. Um, so anyway. So I've seen you put on Facebook, uh, you had, you were going to have me on your podcast and any questions. So did anybody send in any questions for me? Uh, we got a little bit more of this segment to go. Uh, what about? Oh, man. <laughs> so, um, we got two more races coming up after the trucks Xfinity series. Yeah. Uh, it's the Xfinity series and the Cup race on Sunday, the Daytona 500. Yeah. Uh, do you have I any think predictions? It's going to be a good year. The Xfinity race is going to have going to be a good year. Yeah, I think it's going to be Austin Cindric. You think he's going to come do it, get it back, get another one back? I think Austin Cindric is going to go back to back, but I think he's going to be the main. Um, driver to beat throughout the season. Well, I know it was, um, well, Harrison Burton's doing pretty good. Um, and I know, obviously, last year, you know, uh, Chase Briscoe, he was doing pretty good. He got pulled up, taking over Tim Boyer's ride. So, uh, you know, that's congratulations to him. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Harrison Burton was doing pretty good. Um, Austin Tendrick was doing pretty good. You know, there's been, there's, there's a couple, there's a couple fast Xfinity guys, but, yeah, I think, uh, I think Austin Cinder is going to be the guy to beat this year. Yeah. Going for back-to-back again. Uh, championships. And uh, Daytona 500. It's going to be Daytona 500. Uh, weather isn't looking too promising this weekend, so it looks like it's going to be another Monday Daytona 500. Oh, okay. good God. Um, we've only had... Two Daytona 500s that was ran on a Monday, the one in 2012 where the jet dryer incident happened. Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya. <laughs> jet dryer. He decided he wanted to go super fast, play a Rick Bobby <laughs> move, and try to run through a jet engine. That didn't work out so good, did it? Nope. And uh, we had the 2020 Daytona 500 that was ran on a Monday, and uh, that was. With the Ryan Newman instance, so with this race possibly yeah. being ran on a Monday, who's going to get hurt this year? Uh, I don't know to be honest. <laughs> um, I, I hope I hope. I want to stay know. away from that question as much as possible, but with the yeah, way twenty, you don't 
you don't really want nobody to get hurt, whether if you like them or not. You know, you don't want to see nobody get hurt at all. Yeah, um, but that's you, want, you know, that's, obviously, as a fan, you want to see, you know, you you want to see wrecks and crashes. But as a racer and a competitor, you don't want to be in the wreck. You know. Yeah. That'll just ruin your night. But uh, you know, as long as everybody stays cool, but there's gonna be a lot of a lot of dra- drivers out there. And, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, for the driver, I want to win. I really want Ryan uh, Newman to win. You said who? Newman. 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 Yeah. Well, I, I would figure you're gonna pick Bad Brad. Well, I want him to win as well. Um, oh. but the way his uh, luck has been going in the oh, super speedway races, same goes for Kyle Busch actually. Um, it. That's uh, I don't see him winning the five hundred. No, I, I don't think so. You the know, way that and, uh, those two drivers' yeah. luck has been on super speedways. No, they haven't been. They haven't been doing too good lately. No. Um, I know. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of there's there's a couple few uh, super speedway racers. You know, if you like them or not, that's not the case. But I know Denny Hamlin usually pretty good at the Daytona. I, I think he's won what. Three of them? Three of them. Three, four of them? 2016, 2019, 2020. Yeah, three of them. Yep. I think he's the favorite to win, isn't he? Uh, Yeah, going for three in a row. Yep, yep. I know he's pretty good. You know, Ryan Blaney, he's pretty good, actually, too. I think he's got, what, seconds? Yeah. He's got a couple second places. Joey Logano is pretty good, but he always finds a way to, like, screw himself over. You know, that's what I was going to say. He'll be doing good, and all of a sudden, he'll... Last year, you know, perfect incident. Last year, he started, uh, he was doing fine, and then uh, he started pushing, uh, I think it was El Marola. El Marola and to Keselowski. Into... Yeah, yeah. Pushed him into Brad. It's his own damn teammate. Pushed him into Brad, ruined both their days. Yeah. And then a couple of laps later, boom, then there goes Joey. He's just way too aggressive. That's his problem. Yep. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Daytona 500, gonna be a fun race to watch. Hopefully I, I'm able to watch it, unlike last year, where I had to work for like oh, man. the well, first I, half yeah, of it. On a yeah. Anyway, we go on to the mailbox questions. Uh-oh. Uh, we we only got two actually one statement <laughs> and one question. Two. We have what, man? One statement and one question. Oh well, that's pretty popular, ain't it? <laughs> well, uh, the the statement is for me. <laughs> Race reviews on uh, actually N R R N twenty on Instagram tells or says to me. Um, what was it? Up oh, there it is. Um, you said NASCAR in the previous episode that I watched. Um, can you please explain to me what NASCAR is? All right, so oh, thanks you, thank you for uh, watching. So yeah, we kind of have an inside meme uh, against NASCAR. Actually, everything in general. Uh, for NASCAR, we re- reference it as NASFART. NASFART? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Why, why are you refer to, to NASFART? <laughs> but yeah, at usually at the end of the races, there's that one caution that comes out that to change the to change up the race. Oh, you mean like? Uh... The two or three different times this year that a uh, caution came out on at like, like five three. to go. No, at the end of the race with like five to go, four to go, that shuts up and over time restart. And again, yeah. inside meme. Uh, but yeah, and then ever since that happened, like God knows how many times because it's NASCAR or NAS fart. Uh, we just memed it up, and uh, there it is, NAS fart. Named it up, huh? Yep. Yeah. So let's say... You know, them, late, them late cautions are uh, they're a thing to deal with, I'll tell you that. 
yeah, let's say Denny Hamlin is leading the race set with like five to go after leading the most laps and being the dominant one. Caution comes out. Yeah. And the guy who gets a good start in third, that gets a good jump on third on the restart, they beat Hamlin instead of Hamlin winning the race and being dominant the entire race. That's an ass yeah, part. Well, well, see, <laughs> there's, there's kind of strategy behind, if a late caution, the only the only time a late caution is bad is if you're in first or second place. Yeah. The worst place to be in would have a late caution is in first place. Because if that comes out a late caution, there's four laps to go, five laps to go, whatever. And that person in the lead stays out, you better bet your ass the next five, six, seven, eight guys are coming in and getting their last set of tires put on. In the same sense, if that guy out in first place, if guy in first, second, third comes in, they're staying out. So it's one of them damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, Oh, the Coke so, 600 last year. Yeah, I, that's exactly what you're referencing, too. The Coke 600. Chase yep. Elliott was leading. His Chase, teammate Chase spins. And uh, the caution comes out. Keselowski went went in, I believe, or he either stayed out for track position. Then he won the race. I forgot how that how the pit stops went down. Yeah, well, same thing happened to Chase last year. He was leading the race, and... Um, he came in, there was a couple laps left, he came in, he was in first, he pitted with like four laps to go, five laps to go, he pitted, nobody else pitted, he came back out at like ninth, and got up to like third. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of them things, if, you know if he comes in, nobody else is gonna, but if he stays out, everybody else is gonna pit. It's one of them, you know, hope for the best, and hope a teammate comes up on you, but... Jimmy Johnson finished second that race. I remember that race, or the ending yeah. of that race clearly. Yeah. But yeah, that's NAS part for you. There, you, there you go. Race reviews. There's your statement. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the question from Ronnie Smith Jr. <laughs> What's up, Ronnie? Uh, what got you into racing? Uh. What got me into racing? Um, I'm going to follow that question with a kind of like a statement. I actually got started into racing, I think, in like the, uh, in the 14, in 2014, maybe, right around that region, I'm going to say. Um, and what got me into it? Um, believe it or not, well, I, I've always had interest in it, and I've always wanted to do it. You know, I used to go to Dixie, you know, with my grandparents and, do, you know, all the time, you know, watch, watch all the races and stuff like that. And, uh, um, one, uh, my buddy put on Facebook on like a Wednesday or a Thursday or Tuesday or Wednesday that, um, he bought a, I don't know what the hell kind of car he had and he wanted to go out and do Max D and he asked if any other, any buddies wanted to do it with him. And I, I said, sure, you know, I'll do it. He said, cool, just find a car, you know, and you got to do this to it. I said, all right. So I started scrolling through Facebook, and uh, my uh, my very first car was a 1996 Ford Escort with a four-cylinder with 318,000 miles I paid 10 bucks for. And the reason why I originally got into racing is because my buddy from high school needed a push-pull partner, and... I decided to select myself. So that's actually why I got into racing. And then from then on, obviously, it just grew and grew and grew. And now, you know, I would have to say to myself that I am one of the faster truck racers. You know, maybe not, but I, I think I'm one of the faster truck racers around. One of the fastest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's actually that's actually what got me to race. I wanted to do it for a while, but I just never did until my one buddy needed needed a guy to push pull him. So I said, "Well, I guess I'm your man." 
Uh, for me, what got me into racing, um, 2007 Talladega race. I found that um, race on TV, obviously. That was the coolest thing on earth. And I've been watching it since uh, uh, NASCAR, obviously. And um, for locally, I went to a Eve of Destruction when I was six years old. Six or seven. And I've liked that. And um, I just seem to like racing. That just fit in my style. It just right. grew on me fast. It's a uh, it's a race, you know. There's there are a lot of things you can do in the world, um, but uh, if you ain't having fun doing it, why do it? And I I have lots of fun doing it, so I continue doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I enjoy every bit of it, whether it's uh watching from the stands or trying to be a part of it at least. <laughs> Uh, dang you, 2020. Uh, I, uh, I heard, uh, heard a little thing that you think about doing some Max D with, uh, with that, uh, what is that, that old wheel cutlass, that one, uh, that green one you have? You, yep. You, am I hearing that right? You can do some Max D this year? I hope so. At least one or two or three races. Oh, there you go. I can't do... You don't do... know if you like it unless you try. Yeah, uh... Was what's the first race again? May first. Yep. I think that's a big race beginning of May. Yep. May first. Uh, I hope I can be a part of that. I really hope so. But well, I know my you luck. Know oh. so, how's, that, how's that car coming along? Uh, pretty good. Uh, it's set up right now. Uh, but knowing my luck, I won't get to, <laughs> cause it's my luck. Uh. Weather got me the first time. Uh, the 2019 season ending. Um, destruction race at Auto City. That one got rained out. Yep, yep. I remember that. Got my car ready for, for the next year. COVID struck. That knocked me out. <laughs> I was going to do it at Wasso. There's no way to get the car there. So I couldn't join that one. Actually, maybe it was a good thing that I didn't join that one because it was uh, uh, something different than Auto City and Bertrand. Yeah, yeah, I didn't go to that. I was, I was uh, actually up north camping that weekend um, when the um, final auto or the Owasso night of destruction. Everybody bring your car out, let it get destroyed. Yeah, my teammate's car got be. destroyed. What's that? My teammate's car got destroyed in the uh, flagpole. Uh, Ryan? Uh, no, that's, um, uh, Richard. R.K. McDonald, oh, uh, yep. 72. Yep, 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 yep. 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 Actually, uh, Jay Quinn was driving it, and then he just got pinned up against the tire, then the car was destroyed on the first lap. Oh, should have went around the tire the first time, the first lap. Uh, oh, but uh, you know, that kind of sucks, but like I said, one of them things, and you gotta watch what you're doing, so, you know, especially at the end of the year, everybody's tired of just sitting around, so it's time to kill a car, you know? Yep. Actually, I remember this clearly. The winner of the race... He actually didn't go on the start. He let everyone go. <laughs> let everyone get their stuff destroyed, and then the winner just tried to work his way up through the field because yep, of that. He's putting around and uh, passing when he can, where he can, and, you know, them, uh, them flagpoles are pretty dangerous races. Oh, yeah, that's why I don't. That's why I'm not excited for those races. Uh, but with the way Auto City has it set up, I feel comfortable running them. Uh, yeah, Auto City's not too bad. Auto City's not too bad. Man. Yeah. I just don't like that um, tire up on the uh, turn two like that. That's what gets me. Especially looking at it from the stands. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a problem for me. 
Oh, well. well. Yeah. I'll learn. If I don't race it, then I'm just not going to get over it. So I have to race yeah. it. Oh, well, so that's, um, what were we talking about? Uh, uh we were on really? the final question. Oh, what, oh. what got us into racing? Yeah, How did we go uh, from yeah. that to where we got in flagpoles? Uh, I don't sure. know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got nothing else with that. Final thoughts yeah, before man. we end the episode? Uh, not as of right now. I mean, uh, I appreciate you having me on on your podcast here. You know, I've, um, what do they say on a radio show? Long time listener, first time caller. Well, long time <laughs> listener, first time appearance. Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about that saying, so <laughs> I hope. I think that's. I think that's how it goes. Hopefully, um, I don't. I don't know anything about that saying, but yeah, uh, forty-six minute episode, pretty good, pretty good. What's your usual? Uh, forty minutes to fifty minutes, maybe a little bit over fifty, yeah. but it's pretty normal episode. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm on right in, the, right in the ballpark. Average. Hey, that's, I'm okay with average. <laughs> average. Anyway, tomorrow we got the Daytona Duels. That's going to be fun to watch. And then it's uh, yep. NASCAR Weekend, Trucks, Xfinity, and the Daytona 500. Ooh. Oh, wait. We already went over picks. I got a question. Who do you think... Um, let's, let's play this uh, uh, premature selection for... The playoffs in NASCAR. Oh, so we could you could go over this final sixteen, but that takes a lot. So, who do you think is going to make it into the the final, the round of four? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I know I know it's real early, and they haven't even raced a points race yet. But uh, let's kind of see if you can uh, figure out who do you think is going to be in the final four this year. Kevin Harvick. Okay. Denny Hamlin. Okay. Mr. Choke Master. <laughs> yep. Uh, ooh. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin. The last two are going to be tough because there's a lot of guys who can make it in. Mm-hmm. Joey Logano. Okay. And I don't think Chase Elliott's going to make it in this year. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, your final? It, it's not going to be Keselowski. He usually falls off after a good year. Yep. I've got to go with Kyle Busch. So, okay, now the final question is, who do you think is going to win? 2021 NASCAR. Oh, God. Um, Do you think it's going to be the closer, Kevin Harvick? Do you think it'll be Mr. Chokes a lot, Danny Hamlin? How about the uh, Mr. Aggression, uh, Joey Logano, or... Bushy. Or Bush. (laughs) Bushy. Uh, After a year like last year, uh, hopefully Harvick. Harvick is my choice. I'm Harvick, too. Um, I actually lost a bet to you on Harvick. Because you picked Brad, and I picked Harvick. And I lost. So you let me repick, and I picked Chase. And as a consolation prize, you still haven't paid me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't met each other in a while, so no, there you go. With it, with it, with it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, you don't think that they pampered up the uh, the schedule enough for Chase to make it back in? To be honest, I want to rechange my picks, but my picks as of now are set. I don't think Chase Elliott is going to make 
it into the final four. Okay. At least I hope not. I agree with um I agree with Kevin Harvick. I think he is pretty consistent. You know, he 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 goes where he needs to. He's he has fine speed when he has to find speed. Um, you know, he does what he has to. You know, he may not uh, he will he pull off another ungodly nine wins this year? I don't think he'll be able to pull that off. Um, but uh, I think he's gonna be consistent enough to make it back in, so I'm I'm saying Kevin Harvick as well. Yeah. Um, um, I, uh, I don't want to say Chase just because everybody's on the Chase bandwagon, but I think that with the amount of road courses in there, I think he should get enough playoff points to, to whether it's by wins or by playoff points to make it in. So I'm going to say Chase, not what? just because everybody's on the Chase wagon, because I'm, I'm, I think he's going to be a good enough contender in the road courses. That's what we thought with uh, Kevin Harvick last year, but he blew those all away in stage, I meant, round three of the playoffs. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, 100%. Um, but, uh, like I said, so I'm saying I'm saying Harvick, and then I'm going to say Chase, and then I'm going to say, uh, oh, uh, let me think for a second here. Um, uh, Logano may make it back in. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not too confident on Logano. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think Brad's gonna make it. He's gonna he's gonna fall back off. Yeah. Um, and I don't, you know, talking about Hendricks guy in shape. Um, I don't I don't know if I'm confident in Kyle or uh, not Kyle Bush in Kyle Larson. Um, he should be exciting to watch this year. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm very excited to see how he'll do, but, uh, you know, I know he's not super good on, um, he's not good on super speedway and he's, you know, with his dirt experience, he'll, he'll do good in some of the short tracks, obviously, and maybe some road courses, but, uh, I think he may make it into the round of eight, but I don't think he'll make it out of the round of eight. Um, I want to see Alex Bowman make it in just because, you know, I, I, I like the 48 car and I like Alex Bowman, but, uh. So, I guess I'll, I'll call a dark horse in Bowman, I guess. Oh. Um, Bowman will be, I think he may make it in. And then uh, the, the final guy to make it in, um, I'm actually going to say Truex. Yeah, I think Truex has been a real sleeper the past two years. Yep, so I, I think Truex will be in there. And then to win it this year, um, out of Harvick, Chase Elliott, Bowman, and Truex. Um, I don't think Bowman's. I don't think Bowman's gonna get it. And um, Phoenix. I know Kevin Harvick is usually good at Phoenix, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick with Kevin Harvick. That's my guy to win it this year. Huh. He actually finished uh, second there um, last spring race at Phoenix. Yep. To Logano. Yep. And I don't know what happened. I don't what I don't know what happened to him in the um, season finale there last year. I think he was just off the pace a little bit. Yeah, I think he I think he fell off. I think he ended up like seventh or ninth or something. I'm not entirely for sure. Somewhere low top, uh, low top ten. Yep, yep. Back in the pack, back in the top ten somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's my that's my picks. I got um, I got a really good question. To end this uh, episode off. Will Bubba Wallace win a race? <laughs> I sure damn hope not. The same. <laughs> uh, um, oh no. Nothing, nothing against nothing against Bubba Wallace. Um, and I'm not going to go into that whole um, political views. Yep. But I don't whether whether you like him or not. That's not the case. I don't think he's a good enough driver. You know. Um, you know that's a whole whole separate issue, but I don't I don't think he's a good enough driver with the with the high caliber of drivers there are now. Um, I don't think he'll he he'll 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 get in the top five top ten yeah, hundred percent. But I don't think I don't think he'll be able to win a race. Hmm. Um, he's not good at road courses at all. I think his best road course finish is like 
seventeenth, maybe something like that. Yeah, he's, he's not, not good at road courses. Yeah. You know, for super speedways, you know, you don't have to be I'm not saying you don't have to be skilled, but you know, if you pick a line and as long as you don't get freight trained and pushed to the outside and sent to the back of the pack, if you stay in line, you're pretty much a safe bet, you know, unless somebody like Joey is want want to be a big push. Yeah. But uh you know, so I think he finished second or third behind uh Austin Dillon a couple of years back, am I right? Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't follow Bubba Wallace, especially before the incident that happened last year. I just never yeah, really well, cared yeah, for Bubba. But uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% accurate, but I'm pretty sure he finished in the top five a couple years back at uh, Talladega, maybe? Oh, oh, you know. oh, oh, speaking of Talladega, uh, he was oh. actually leading that race last year until he just made a mistake, and then he got freight trained on the bottom. He yeah. just went to the top. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. If, as long as you don't get freight trained, you know, if you stay in line and they don't come around you, you're pretty much, you can you can keep your position. But, uh, no, I, I don't I don't think that Bubba Wallace will win a race this year. Until uh, that top five, in, um, like you said, top five with him running there, until late race caution comes out. And then he nas parts the race. Well, I, I still, I'm, I'm still <laughs> saying it. I, I, I call it now. I do. Bubba Wallace will not win a NASCAR race in 2021. I, I personally believe Kyle Larson will win. Before. Before, yes. Yeah. I, I believe Kyle. I'm pretty sure Kyle Larson will win a race this year, and I'm pretty confident that Bubba Wallace will not. And this doesn't this doesn't go against me personal feelings for him because I, I it doesn't matter if you like the person or not I just don't think he's a good enough driver to win a race yeah so that's that's where I'm, I'm I'll leave it at that all right so I guess I'm gonna call it uh, quits on the episode fifty seven minutes longest episode I believe it was oh, a fun one. Thanks, uh, Paul, for joining. And, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. It's actually uh, been a fun episode. Oh, definitely. Definitely. We're going to have to meet up so I can get my damn 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Nah, I'll get it from you later. I trust you. I'll okay. get it from you at race season. All right. Or I can just buy your uh, a pit pass for you or something. I ain't worried about that later. I'm not worried about twenty bucks. What's twenty bucks? What's twenty bucks amongst friends, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, all right. Um, thank you guys for watching. You oh, you're welcome. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, till next time. See you in the next one.